I think Terquavian Smith is the most intriguing returner in a pretty grim list of returning prospects for the 2023 draft. Uh, he has some like very extreme strengths um, and also some fairly extreme weaknesses. Um, and we're going to get into him. Um, and I think his development's really interesting to talk about. I think his role is really interesting to talk about. Um, and the first thing and the big thing about Turk is how unbelievable of a shooter is. His shooting numbers for a freshman and, I mean, just for any college player were unbelievable, as we'll get into in a bit. Um, as were the manner in which he got shots off. Turk is a pull-up practitioner uh, where he is able to pull from anywhere he wants on the floor. Like, even though Turk is, like, standing multiple feet behind the line, you just cannot give him any space because he will pull right in the face of whatever defender is guarding him. And he's so good weaponizing his handle to create space for his jumper. Um, you know, he, he loves this little hop step back move that's over seven foot one John Butler. Um, from like the logo there unbelievable stuff he's also awesome setting up uh, for off movement shots way behind the three-point line um, look how he's able to set his feet uh, turn and fire because of how deep he gets which you know makes this distance longer for the trailing defender to cover it's beautiful stuff and that range unlocks so so much for him it is really like unfathomable how good his how good his shot is um, like, this season, Turk shot 15 threes for 100 possessions, which is rarefied volume. I, I've talked about how important volume and shot versatility are for projecting shots. Um, and Turk is, is up there. Like, he is in rarefied company um, with that kind of volume. Um, some of the great shooters um, of our time. And, you know, shout out Isaiah Joe as well. And only Trey as well was a freshman. His free throw is definitely by far the lowest of these guys, which could be a concern. Because um, one of the big things about, about Turk is, is this real? Is this sustainable or was this just a big hot streak? Uh, which whether or not it is, um, you know, it was a good decision for him. I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, returning to school will help us answer that question, which is why I'm so excited to watch him develop um, and, you know, see... Um, if this ends up being real and he you know, continues to shoot like this, uh, that just adds so much value um, as is. He has some mechanical flaws um, where like he can, uh, like, like his base can kind of be off. Uh, watch, he like is very prone to like kind of like swaying his, his base forward a lot. Uh, he doesn't often follow through. Uh, his shot can be pretty upright and stiff. Uh, and funny enough, funny enough, Turks, uh, kind of like mechanical quirks remind me of like earlier career Lamelo in a lot of ways. Obviously, Lamelo started at a way lower baseline, um, but like NBL Lamelo had similar issues uh, where he'd sway his legs forwards like really aggressively, um, and he like wouldn't hold his follow through. And he's just generally very stiff on these jumpers. Uh, like you can just see how upright he is, and this is like you know improved Lamelo. Um, you know you can see it kind of again on this shot, uh, just the kind of stiffness. Uh, the legs, all of that, you know, I think is similar to Turk's issues. And Lamelo has, you know, largely ironed those problems out. Or his base is so solid and balanced now. Uh, he holds his follow through. Um, the the mechanical issues that the elbow is, you know, Turk's elbow is miles, miles better than where Lamelo's elbow was, even at the same state. Like it is in uh, as where Lamelo's was, you know, improving but all over the place. So just a fun little comparison I saw. Um, obviously very different players and, you know, Turk's not Lamello or, you know, Lamello caliber, but interesting similarity for potential shot development where that extreme strength is, is balanced out by Turk's first, like the first of two, like big weaknesses and just like his, his general physical athletic profile where this play encapsulates it well. Uh, Turk's burst and vertical leaping can just be really limiting. Uh, where he's not able to blow by defenders when his change of pace uh, doesn't work. And, you know, when he's kind of, you know, contested and is taking contact and is in the teeth of the defense, he really struggles to get up off of, you know, two feet in traffic, off of one foot in traffic, as we're going to see. Um, and this, like, really limits his finishing uh, to me. Like, as you can see, the, you know, like, like he just kind of gets walled off here uh, by Caleb Bluff again. Um, and, you know, create space for a step back three, which is nice. But the point being, he really struggles to get into the paint. And even when he can hit these, you know, little floaters, because his touch is pretty great, 
um, despite his bad finishing numbers. It really isn't off of much created space. The, the defender is all up in his grill still already there. And Turk's finishing is, is absolutely something I'm like fairly concerned with. Um, his finishing is real bad. Like, 48% from, from at the rim is, like, really not good. And the history of these, like, high-volume shooters who can't finish is not great. Like, most guys just don't finish that poorly. Um, and even if you get rid of the shooting, like, this bad of finishing is not a very auspicious indicator. Like, there are guys like Trey who are poor finishers, obviously, um, you know, other really good small guards. But it's really not, like, it's not a lot of prospects who were like really rough finishers and, and ended up being fine. I do think Turk is probably a better finisher than his like awful 48%, which would get him, you know, like on his on his volume, definitely towards like the bottom at the bottom end of this list. Whereas in the open floor, Turk has like some wild open floor athleticism and kind of explosion here that he just can't at this point capitalize on in the half court. And we've definitely seen guys improve that half court athleticism, um, the half court leaping off of, you know, one and two feet with kind of technical stuff. So I do think there's certainly hope um, for Turk there. And as we've kind of touched on, his touch is just really, really awesome. He can really flow in shots from anywhere. Um, and his change of pace is so great. Uh, and his, you know, his change of pace, handle deception. Uh, he is an advanced, advanced handler um, for a guy of his shot level and age. So he can easily kind of get in and out of pick and roll coverages, um, but isn't able to finish here. Again, the, the finishing issues where he's just really stiff and upright. Uh, Turk, as we'll continue to see, has like really great shin angles as like his his shins and like just go so low to the ground on on you know on the breaks of his crosses kind of hard to see here but we'll see more later uh, which really helps him explode but uh, when he's trying to get leverage and get around defenders with his burst and take contact he's so upright and you know lacking in air mobility and just general like upper body torso mobility you can again just see the change of pace uh, that he has ability to, his ability to get anywhere on the court he wants um, at any time with his speed um, and his ability to change speeds more importantly and change direction so seamless so seamlessly with that tight handle it's it's really impressive and while it's certainly raw um, I think there's a lot um, of potential here and this kind of brings us to our like our, our other big issue which is just Turk's general feel and and you know process and the way he approaches the game as um, an on-ball guard which is just kind of erratic at this point a lot of his plays just like don't really make sense and don't seem to have a ton of thought into them. We're like Turks, you know, raw tools. Here's a, a, a really good example of the shin angle. Uh, look at that. His shin is totally parallel right off the ground. That's impressive stuff and allows Turk to explode into the paint, but he's like not really sold on what to do. He should probably be shooting this even though twisting was never a good idea because this defender is already retreating, but Turk tries to pass it anyway and stuff like that um, is just way too common for him where he's not making good decisions and he's rushing his decisions. But there certainly was progress uh, throughout the season where Turk uh, ended up getting pretty solid at snaking pick and rolls, being patient, and you know getting into the paint this way. And again, we see his awesome floater shine there, which I, I'm you know, hoping will end up uh, you know, improving his rim, his rim efficiency. And as we said, like Turk will just miss you know, tighter passes. Um, where he is pressured, but this is pretty wide open. Like, this should be a wide open layup, uh, but Turk is pressured, doesn't see it, and ends up throwing up a bad shot. Um, but the big space passing is definitely there for Turk, um, as when he's running these high pick and rolls. And because of his shooting gravity, because of the spacing that he commands, like, he's going to get a lot of these open paints, I think, um, and he can make pretty solid interior reads off of those. So, like, there is just certainly low-hanging fruit there, just continuing to improve the passing. And I think the passing probably will improve given his baseline and what he can already do in big space with his shooting. Um, but yeah, I, the, the money question is, like, how real is Turk shooting? Because if it is, like, super real and he's just an incredible shooting prospect, like, he's going to be someone worth, you know, a lottery pick plus. Um, because guys with that combination of shooting and handling dexterity um, are, are, really, are really, really rare. Um, especially ones who are, you know, college freshmen. Um, and, you know, due to that, I think a lot of his process stuff is understandable. Like, he's certainly never going to be, like, a really great decision maker or someone who can really, you know, run lots of pick-and-roll actions. But 
I do think they're like a learned reads and you know a, just a learned process that he'll gain from playing on the ball more and getting more reps. And I'm really excited to watch him in year two because uh, I think there could be a lot of strides made um, and you know potential lottery top ten pick at some point as well.